Rio de Janeiro is the case study for the urban issues and challenges topic. Situated on Brazil's Atlantic coast, built up around the Guanabana Bay, it has 13.3 million inhabitants and is South America's second most visited city after Machu Picchu. Rio was capital city from 1763 until 1960 and is the second biggest city in Brazil after Sao Paulo. Rio de Janeiro's biggest exports are coffee, sugar, iron, pharmaceuticals, clothing and furniture. As Brazil is a newly emerging economy, this growth is expected to continue. Recent growth in its industry sector has brought many jobs which have boosted the city's economy and brought improvements in transport services and the environment. As well as the new factory jobs, there has been a rise in construction and steel jobs. In Rio, the richest 1% and 12% of the income, whereas the poorest 50% and 13%. This gap in wealth is clearly visible by the difference in their housing situations. Favelas consist of unplanned, self-built buildings, often built on poor foundations and on top of older structures. The majority are comprised of cheap building materials like concrete, wood and iron, and they often don't have good foundations. There are around a thousand of these favelas in Rio de Janeiro, the majority of which are located in mountainous areas. Now on to electricity. Rio suffers from frequent blackouts that often last several hours. In poorer areas, people often try to access electricity illegally by wiring their houses into the main supply. This carries a large risk of electrocution and is very unsafe, with many people dying per year. Solar power could easily increase the electricity supply in the favelas, as they have a lot of sunlight. However, some people cannot afford the high prices. Rio has worked to develop its power supply by building a new nuclear plant and building 60 kilometers of new power lines. Simplicio HEP Complex is a unique project consisting of a 30 mile long system of canals, tunnels, dams and reservoirs designed to produce electricity through hydroelectric power. It also helps prevent flooding of a large area of land that is both urban and arable. It is one of the most efficient hydroelectric power systems in the world. It costs 2 billion USD and has improved Rio's electricity supply by 30%. 37% of Rio's water is lost through leaking pipes. This, like electricity, is often caused by people drilling into the pipes to connect their houses to the water supply. Droughts in Rio have become worse in recent years with climate change. However, seven new treatment plants at 300 kilometers of new pipes were built between 1998 and 2014, which has helped to give the people of the favelas clean water access. About 12% of Rio's population still has no access to running water, however. Past the age of 14, Brazilian children have to pay for schooling. This means that they have to get part-time jobs. Teachers are low paid and there is a shortage. Some favelas offer free sport lessons which draw in many students. Grants are also offered for poor families to meet the cost of educating their children. The Favela Biro project is a site and service scheme that gets the local authority to provide land and services for residents to build their own homes. Until 1980, the authorities in Rio refused to acknowledge the existence of the favelas. In the mid-80s, they changed their plan and decided to upgrade the housing and tried to make conditions better for the residents. The project involved forcing eviction from favelas in dangerous areas into other, more developed residential areas, raising taxes for the rich to pay for improved housing for the poor, offering free cultural and sporting activities for the young, drawing more to stay in the education system, Installation of a cable car to connect to the commercial centre of Ipanema, the inhabitants getting one free return ticket a day, and physical development, uh, including paving and naming roads, upgrading housing, improving water supply, sanitation and drainage, building new health, leisure, education and public transport systems. The negatives of the project, however, were that the $1 billion budget did not cover every favela and rents have risen for the poorest residents. They have also not been taught the skills to help repair and maintain their property. The newly built infrastructure has not been maintained well and literacy and unemployment rate remain problems. The 2014 Football World Cup and the 2016 Olympics both took place in Rio de Janeiro. This brought many economic benefits to the area as well as drawing attention to the poor living conditions of many of the residents. One of the benefits of hosting the 2016 Olympics was a United Nations grant for an urban renewal project in the port zone, one of the most neglected areas of the city. 
This project included the demolition of a major highway and rehoming from a nearby favela. The old highway was replaced with a spacious green boulevard with 50,000 trees. This sent the highway underground in a tunnel. 